in the town of Nitro, West Virginia. Monsanto operated a chemical plant from 1929 to 1995, making an herbicide that had dioxin as a byproduct. The name dioxin refers to a group of highly toxic chemicals that have been linked to heart and liver disease, human reproductive disorders, and developmental problems. The chemical builds up in tissue over time, meaning that even small exposures can accumulate to dangerous levels. In 2001, the U.S. government listed dioxin as a known human carcinogen. In 1949, at the Littoral plant, a pressure valve blew on a container of the herbicide, producing a plume of vapor and white smoke that drifted out over the town. Residue coated the interior of buildings and those inside them with a fine black powder. Many felt their skin prickle and were told to scrub down. Within days, workers experienced skin eruptions, and many were diagnosed with chloracne, a long-lasting and disfiguring condition. The medical reports of the explosion caused a systemic intoxication in the workers involving most major organ systems. Doctors detected a strong odor coming from the patients they described as men excreting a foreign chemical through their skins. Workers also suffered aches, pain, fatigue, nervousness loss of libido, irritability, active skin lesions, and definite patterns of psychological disorders. 226 workers became ill. Dioxin waste went into landfills, storm drains, streams, sewers, into bags with the herbicide, and then the waste was burned out into the air. Dioxin from the plant can still be found in nearby streams, rivers, and fish. Tests also show that some long-time residents have measurable amounts of dioxin in their blood. Monsanto downplayed the incident, saying that the contaminant was fairly slow-acting, and only a irritant to the skin. The natural plant continued to produce herbicides. In the 1960s it manufactured Agent Orange, the powerful herbicide used by the US military to defoliate young girls during the Vietnam War exposing 4.8 million Vietnamese people to dioxin, resulting in 400,000 deaths and disabilities, and 500,000 children born with birth defects. Thirty years after the literal plant incident, Monsanto scientists compare death rates among exposed workers to those of non-exposed workers. When no differences between the two groups were found, Monsanto claimed that dioxin did not cause cancer and that there were no long-term effects from dioxin exposure. But when the study was re-examined, it was found to be riddled with falsified facts, misrepresentations and cover-ups which served to negate any conclusions of adverse health effects from dioxins. Several hundred former employees were too ill to travel to participate in the study. Monsanto refused to use the attending physicians' reports of the illness as part of their study saying that it would introduce inconsistencies. Thus, any critically ill dioxin-exposed workers with cancer such as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma were conveniently excluded from the Monsanto study. The studies in question also have been a key basis for denying compensation to Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange and their children suffering birth defects from such parental exposures. Early internal Monsanto documents reveal that samples of herbicides submitted to the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the 1970s were doctored. In other words, the submitted samples to the government for analysis had been specially prepared so that dioxin contamination did not exist. A later study by the National Institute of Occupation Safety and Health found a statistically significant increase in cancers in the Monsanto workers. In 1984 Monsanto wins a lawsuit filed by seven Nitro plant workers. The seven men had contended that their lingering medical problems, including skin cancer, bladder cancer and a variety of nervous disorders, stemmed from exposure to dioxin and five other chemicals at the company's plant. But the federal jury found that the Monsanto company was not responsible for the illnesses of the retired employees.